Hi, I'm Tim Ellenberger. I'm Vice President of Motion Controls Robotics, and I'm here to provide a tech talk, talk, a robotic tech talk, specifically on robots and a little bit about the models. I guess they had to pull the old guy out of retirement so you could really get the right information. So, uh, FANUC robots uh, are typically yellow for the uh, normal industrial robot. Every robot has a, a model number on it, um, and that model number designates a lot of different things. It includes the model, the R1000, 2000, that basically tells size, and then after that, R1000, there's also another letter, 80 and number, 80H, 80R, 80F, those numbers designate weight in kilograms, and in this case, 80H is a handling robot, so it's only a five-axis machine, and it's typically used for palletizing and packaging. This robot has five axes. The base, which rotates just like a base. The waist, that moves back and forth just like your waist. The upper arm, just like your upper arm. And in this case, a two axis wrist. Each one of those axes can act independently or move together in a coordinated motion. One of the most important things of robots is preventative maintenance. Along with the grease being changed, grease has to be changed in each, each axis, we also want to look at the batteries. There's batteries in the base of the robot and there's also batteries in the controller. If the power is turned off to the robot, these batteries keep all the information for the servo so it can, when it turns back on it knows where it's at. If the battery dies, the robot's lost, it has to be remastered. We to change the batteries, the batteries have to be changed under power and we would suggest have it done by a certified technician. During preventative maintenance, we talked about batteries. Batteries for the mechanical unit are located in the back and it's typically D-cells. Again, we have robot cables that control the robot that need to be checked for frayed, make sure that the cables are intact, that the connectors are all intact. Air lines are all good. Communications lines are good. And in this case, we have a, a camera input on this a uh, mechanical unit that allows a camera to be mounted through the cable in here, then straight back to the controller. There's also uh, stoppers, that uh, local stop for each axis. It may check those to make sure they're not broken, loose, those kind of things, to make sure they're still functioning. The end effector is mounted to the robot with a series of bolts. Always check those bolts regularly. I would suggest every month, two months, or three months to make sure that they're not loose or backing out so you that end effector stays in place without being loose. There's also bolts on the end effectors that could mount cylinders, slides, uh, valves, those kind of things. Make sure they're still all tight. A lot of air fittings. Make sure the air fittings are tight, not spinning, loose, that the air lines aren't chafed, uh, that the filters are clean, those kind of things. During the annual preventative maintenance, or even in your quarterly or bi-yearly maintenance and, and uh, review of the system, we would suggest that you make sure that the emergency stop is in place and functional on the controller, on the teach pendant, test them, make sure that they do work, make sure all buttons are intact, not broken, make sure that the actuator switch on the teach pendant is working. Dead man switches on the back of the teach pendant are functional and not torn up. And the teach pendant cable is intact and not torn up, frayed, run over, smashed, things like that. Make sure that the air filter or air fan is clean and that the, any air flow areas are not blocked in the controller. We talked about different robot models. Well, this is the same robot model as the, the first robot we looked at. It's still an R1000, but this one is an R1080F, which is typically a floor mount robot and typically six axis. So we have the base axis again, still rotates just like the base. The waist axis still rotates like the waist or tilts. The upper arm goes up and down. But in this case, we have three wrist axis. So in the wrist axis, we have roll, pitch, and yaw, so it's three axis just like your wrist. That's the only real difference between this robot and the H robot is five axis versus six axis. Still have the same preventative maintenance, same controller maintenance, just an additional axis.